Hey guys, my name is Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be bringing you some rainbow recommendations. So I've got a bunch of books on my shelves that I want to talk about but they don't really fit into any kind of real category. So I've decided I'm going to do a mini series on here where I talk about my favourite books to a specific colour because why not just group them by their covers because that's all we pay attention to on booktube anyway, isn't it? I'm going to be doing a video for every single colour in the rainbow which I will link down below like the mini series when they start kind of ticking over. I don't know how long this is going to take me but I figured I'd start with the colour red today. So these are just seven books that I think are super awesome and that you should definitely read because they're really cool and they happen to be red and that's why I'm talking about them collectively today. They are completely disparate when it comes to genre and age range and yeah, there's a non-fiction in there as well, so it's just kind of a case of books that I think are cool and read. First one on my stack is Witchfire by Anya Bast. This is a paranormal romance which definitely has a heavy emphasis on sex scenes and a bit of erotica. Um, as you can see, my copy is well loved and truly battered, no comments there. And it is book one of a series of four which focus on the different elements. With so much kind of the paranormal romance slash, slash paranormal erotica out there, there is actually a fairly heavy emphasis on the plotline rather than just the sexy scenes. And that's really, really awesome. And is what I look for in a book which does have um, some sexy times as well, shall we say. A bit of a raunchy, a bit not for safe for work, you know what I mean. Um, basically, it tells the story of Mira who is, like with so many of these things, your average girl who just doesn't realise how pretty she is and all of her untapped potential and then in enters Jack who is our leading man and he's been charged to protect her because it turns out that Mira is a very powerful air witch and the bad guys in this world, um, I can't remember what they're called, the Duskoff maybe? something like that, are after her. So Jack has to look after her and in typical fashion, the classic bodyguard falls in love with their charge. The two of them meet in very electrifying ways. We have the added bonus as well that Jack is a fire witch and air and fire complement each other. So sparks will fly. I think Annie Bass is a wonderful writer. I think that her erotic fiction is very top quality. It's very, there's still a lot of emphasis on the character development and the plot development in there. I think her magic system is very well rounded. The world building is surprisingly good for a book that is really about getting your rocks off. So given that, I think that it is absolutely wonderful. So if you are keen on paranormal romance, which I don't think I've ever talked about on this channel before, but it's something that I love and has like a really special place in my heart, especially harking back to like teenage Emma. That's all I used to read back then. I actually picked up this book when I was like 13 from a bookstore. Parents didn't realise that there was so much sex in it. So this was my first introduction to like sexy time literature. Very exciting. But yeah, I definitely recommend giving this one a go. Or anything from Annie Bass actually. She has a huge range of really cool stuff. She's got one about vampires, one about fairies. Like the girl be good. But this is the red cover. So we're talking about this one. Going on a completely different tangent now. We have The Power by Naomi Alderman. I barely need to introduce this because it was making so many waves back last year and in 2017. It did win the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2017 and it has been linked with Margaret Atwood's Handmaid's Tale. It tells a story of a world where women gain this power almost overnight where it's it's a biological thing but basically we have the ability to shock people. Um, think like an electric eel. It starts with teenagers at first but they can awaken the power in older women and it's about the flip and role reversal of women now having more physical power over men because they can kill them with a single touch or cause them extreme pain and then the ramifications of that through society. It follows, it's either four or five women and it's kind of in very different situations and it's looking at how it plays out for each of them. I really love this book, I think it's absolutely fascinating. Criticism for it out there has said that it basically um, moves too quickly and isn't realistic for the timeline and I do understand what they mean. However, I think that Naomi Oldman did a lot of that just because you have to limit your scope with a book like this. I mean there's only like 350 pages in this. You have to limit what you can do, you have to make some kind of assumptions here or there and I think by speeding up the timeline it's trying to um, artificially create that atmosphere so that we can explore um, those ideas rather than the actual slow length of time it would probably take in the real world. You've got to treat it more like a thought experiment than necessarily a work of like realistic fiction. Um, and I think that's always the case with speculative fiction. Like I blitzed it in a day because I couldn't put it down and I think that the characters are brilliant. I love Roxy, she's such a fucking badass, like that chick 
just rules man like and I think it's a really, really fascinating look at the physical power related to gender roles. Um, so yeah, definitely one to read. Okay, you've heard me talk about this before on my channel quite a few times, but it is Wool by Hugh Howey. This is book one in his Silo trilogy. I have a whole separate book review just for this series and I'll link it down below. This is a dystopian future where we all live in an underground bunker called a silo and it's this like massive, massive, massive um, concrete contraption that's, you know, like a hundred floors high plus and we've been in it for years like literally hundreds of years and we don't know why it's now becoming one of these like cult classic dystopian books and I also think it's really interesting because it also looks at that cabin fever bot bottle episode kind of idea of like people trapped in a small space and by small I don't mean crazy small because we are talking about like almost an entire city in one of these underground things but small enough that you are going to create those tensions I think the characters are wonderful in this it's got some brilliant female representation as well when it comes to really really strong characters the main character Jules Juliet is absolutely awesome there's some really wonderful scenes um, later down the line and yeah it's just it's it's brilliant fun and I would definitely recommend checking out at least this one and then from this deciding if you want to continue or not. A book that I have literally never heard talked about on booktube and I read years ago now is The Minotaur Takes a Cigarette Break by Stephen Sherrill. This is a wonderful quirky weird strange little book that I can't remember a crazy amount about because I did read it now probably about a decade ago but I vividly remember really really enjoying it and it has survived several house moves and numerous like book unhauls and book culls so it kind of it there's something that resonates here still the name is fairly self-explanatory. It is about a minotaur who is working in rural America and he works in like a, just a, a diner, like a grill. Um, he lives on a, on a trailer park and it's just kind of him dealing with American life. It's filled with all sorts of classic Americana in there and it's a weird combination of Greek mythology and classic American story and they just sort of collide together in this gorgeousness. It doesn't have a crazy amount of plot to it from what I remember. I think it's more of kind of a character study and a look at the American lifestyle from the outside and specifically that real like rural style, southern American lifestyle but I think it's such good fun and if you are a fan of either like classic Americana or um, Greek mythology or just like quirky little books that do something funky and are very unassuming and aren't trying to be grandiose in any way, I think that you'll really enjoy this. This one's a fun one. Um, so next we have War with Russia by General Sir Richard Sheriff. This is one of those kind of faction type books where it is technically fiction but it's basically wargaming what would happen if we went to war with Russia. I do now emphasise it's what would happen if we went to war with Russia like three years ago um, because we are now in a very strange political climate where America is doing some crazy shit, we've got a whole Brexit thing going on, everything has kind of shifted in the geopolitical landscape. So this may not be as accurate anymore, but it's very interesting. Basically, it's if Russia decided to, to go for it and how it would play out with people like the UK and America and especially with the UN and everything there. General Sir Richard Sheriff is, as his name suggests, actually a general um, with the British military and this is based off of he wrote a series of essays about the potential threat that Russia poses to the global um, kind of situation and potential conflict especially in Europe and nobody really listened to him so he decided to do it in a fiction style instead. Now because of that you can kind of tell that he isn't a natural fiction writer or it's not his uh, day job as such because there are entire sections where he basically goes off on mini rants about the state of the British army and the economy and all sorts of things like that and then it's almost like he snaps back and realises that he's supposed to be writing about um, like real people in a fiction and then it'll be like like, yeah, so this is how many tanks we have left. No, isn't it terrible? Anyway, um, how was your fishing trip, Bob? How are the kids and Sandra? And you're like, oh, that's not really how characters work. Also, interestingly, he's bothered to change all of the main names, all of the names of like the main players in um, the political landscape, apart from Putin. Putin's just still Putin in this, which is just like crazy to me. Um, he also predicted that Hillary would win rather than Trump, which are uh, awkward. 
but it's great fun to read and if you're into politics or geopolitics or military in general I think this is really really cool. Okay my actual non-fiction because that's kind of like a weird weird halfway house between the two is Black Box Thinking by Matthew Said. I have talked about this on my channel before I think this is a wonderful book it looks at the concept of failure and why failing is good and what you need to do to make sure that failure isn't just a total is an actual failure and is a learning experience. So it gets the name from the black boxes that you have in aeroplanes which will then tell you a lot of feedback information about the plane and if something goes wrong. And the first half of the book is a real comparison between the um, kind of plane industry and that's not the word for it but you get what I mean plane industry and the medical profession and comparing the way that they handle tragedies and mistakes and problems and looking at how, why we need more accountability built into the medical industry when it comes to using these things as learning opportunities rather than things that you need to sweep under the rug and why things like the um, kind of culture of suing in America is creates issues there, why the underfunding in the NHS creates issues there and just what we can do to make it so that that is better. The second half then looks at kind of, it looks at failure in the context of business and instead looking at kind of how failure is you've got to have that feedback loop so that you can then learn from it so you want to fail quickly you want to fail often and you want to fail up so you just want to keep getting better each time and actually it's better to probably try something six or seven times and fail on all of them but get closer and closer to the right result than spending that length of time, same length of time, obsessing over just one thing and then not being able to get any feedback from it. This is something that I've really taken to heart in my life in general. I think it's so, so crucial for how we interact with pretty much anything. And by adopting these kind of ideas, you can just like stop failure being something that cripples you and stops you from wanting to do things and instead just view it as like the best learning opportunity that is out there. And then finally, final book is God's Behaving Badly by Mary Phillips. This is such a good book. It is so much fun. It's also the second mythological book on my shelves. Clearly uh, Greek mythology and red go together. Basically this is what would happen if you took the Greek gods and then dumped them into the modern world. Simple. Easy. It's really good fun. It has lots of throwbacks and nods to classic Greek stories. Um, there is a vague plot going on. Basically Apollo turns off the sun and that causes all sorts of issues and then we have to go down into the underworld and try and turn it back on again. Um, all very complicated and confusing but basically it's, it's an absolute wild ride. I think if you like Greek mythology in any way shape or form whether it just be like a vague interest in the movie Hercules all the way through to like actually being really really into it you're going to really enjoy this book. Uh, Aphrodite is like a phone sex worker, Dionysius runs like a nightclub, it's just so quirky and cool and entertaining, all of the characters are faintly absurd, everything is wonderful and you should definitely check it out. That's it from me! Um, so that was all of the books for Red, I don't know when I'm gonna do this next. Uh, comment down below if you have a specific colour that you'd like me to do because some of them are very underrepresented on my shelves. I'm struggling for oranges and pinks and purples. Have you read any of these? Have any of them made it onto your TBR now because of it? Seriously read mine or takes a cigarette break. I want that book to be more well known. It's so much fun. <laughs> have a wonderful reading week and I'll chat to you soon. Bye guys!